screen. I hope some of the applications I've shown will comply with the current definition of cooperation. Um, well, I, I won't uh, address the dancing context, as you might see, uh, but I will talk uh, about clothing, about robots helping humans, helping people to dress or to fold clothes uh, and so on, to do the laundry. Uh, first of all, where I work uh, is the Institute of Robotics and <coughs> Informatics, and, and Industrial Informatics, uh, which depends on the Council of Scientific Research of Spain and the Project of University of Catalonia. So it's a joint venture, which is it's a pure research center. We have about 100 people working there, but one of our main task forces are robots. We have leg robots, uh, wind robots, uh, all sorts of humanoids, all the humanoids, bigger ones. But I will we'll talk about uh, about robot manipulation. Uh, in particularly, where I work is this perception and manipulation lab, where we have two one robots. The mouse doesn't work. Or this work. Ah, we have uh, two wire robots, and also we have more industrial type robots, uh, stable robots, and also uh, happy devices. And our long term aim is to um, do work in uh, good robots in human environments, and especially assistive uh, environments. This is the team I work with. Uh, I'm very proud of them. And you see that we have very good uh, link with our robots. We are very good friends <laughs> with them. And starting properly with the subject of my talk, uh, textile objects are all over the place in human environments. And of course, their recycling manipulation will open up many possibilities. I mentioned here a few. One is uh, housekeeping and hospital logistics, as I mentioned. Another one is in the clothing business through internet. Uh, some people uh, buy, say, six clothes and or six dresses, and after trying them on, send back four of them because they don't want. Them. So this, they arrive in. in boxes and uh, someone has to take them out and hang them on again or uh, fold them. So here it would make a big change to have problems to do that. And also we aim at uh, helping disabled people to dress and recognizing the different levels of disability and helping them to put clothes on in jacket or whatever. Uh, this uh, clothing handling uh, poses several challenges for learning algorithms. I mentioned here, here some. We try to somehow build uh, building blocks uh, to get uh, an end-to-end -end application. So you see here we have uh, challenges in vision, uh, in human robot cooperation, uh, in skin tuning. Uh, safety is a major issue in this type of applications. And also to be able to develop uh, tasks and mean tasks, it is important to uh, have task planning abilities. So starting in the first uh, challenge, uh, we have performed garment recognition and post estimation for informing grasping of clothing. What do I mean by informing grasping? Uh, usually when you take the, the clothes from the washing machine, say, they come like this, and many people address the, the problem of uh, separating them and folding them and putting them in the cover again, and by uh, separating and then uh, re-grasping the, the, the 
flown many times in order to get to a standard configuration, say to put flat, flat on the table and then uh, fall. We plan to do it differently and exploit the very sophisticated algorithms developed in the computer science community, computer vision community, in order to pick the, the closest by uh, in, uh, a place that permits performing the task. For instance, if we like to hang uh, the, the cloth, then we like to pick it up by the color, uh, etc. So, um, determining grasping points that are um, suitable to perform a given task. Now I will show you how we uh, define where a good living task is. We have devised um, a data set of clothing which is publicly available and that other groups have used already, in which uh, we have, uh, I think, it's six types of uh, clothing pants, uh, dresses, uh, shirts, t shirts. And we have collected um, color, depth, and the um, template for background subtractions for each of them. Moreover, we have annotated the different parts, the color, the hemlines, the hips, etc. on them. And the idea is that once a task is defined, say, hanging, for instance, um, we, we apply a back of words algorithm to learn the particular characteristics of color. Is the annotation by hand? It, yes, the annotation is by hand. By hand. Yeah, has been done by hand. Well, uh, with a bit of help, because but I, I'll be explaining later. But I end easily by, by hand. Uh, then we apply back of words uh, algorithm uh, in order to um, compute uh, a map of likelihood of where the color lies. And uh, well, we find a, back, a bounding box around it, and then we like to be more precise and pick it by the label of the color, not just anywhere. Uh, and for this, uh, we have devised uh, a 3D descriptor, which is based on the local arrangement of the normals of the, the surface because the label has some beauty uh, shape. Um, well, I won't go into details of this, but uh, then for, for different pieces of clothing, we can uh, determine first the bounding box of the color, and afterwards a grasping point of the light label. And we get 82% success. Uh, the same 3D descriptor, uh, we have applied to garment uh, recognition and classification. Uh, and we have compared with uh, classical 3D descriptors like SHOT and F uh, T and H. You see uh, uh, the, the one that gets the best results is this one. Although our uh, descriptor is quite competitive, and in, even in some particular cases it gets better, but what is important is that, is that it is uh, two orders of magnitude faster because it relies only on uh, depth information. Well, this is one building block uh, towards this uh, cloth handling. Uh, the next thing I'm uh, going to show is human uh, robot collaboration from demonstrations. Uh, in this case, I will uh, show first uh, a application with a, a rigid object. The purpose here is to assemble this IKEA table uh, between um, the, the human and the robot. So uh, to do that, first uh, the, this will be acting as a human, and this will be a teacher that will be holding the robot so as to, um, to show the right behavior. And uh, what is intended is that the robot acts as a third hand, say. So this person wants to assemble this table, so this part of the table uh, should be uh, compliant while he is moving uh, it around to put it in 
an uncomfortable position for him. And then when he tries to uh, screw the, the leg, then uh, the robot should uh, help strip uh, the, the, the base of the table. So the distribution here for which I show. You see now is the demonstrator phase in which he is holding the robot to, to give it the right behavior. And now it goes to stiff behavior when while it is uh, screwing. Uh, note that it is based on both vision, because here there are some sensors for the vision, and, and also on happiness. Um, now uh, it, it is the robot is behaving uh, as expected, it is stiff while the human is uh, screwing the, the leg, but if the leg is screwed in a bad position, let's say in the middle of the table, then the robot doesn't recognize it that it has to be stiff, so it begins the case of flying. And the same if the leg is upside down, like here. So, uh, this provides us with the first demonstration uh, of what the intended behavior by the robot should be. Uh, usually, this type of behavior needs to be uh, tuned in order to be more ergonomic for the robot or improve certain cost function. And uh, this skill tuning is usually done uh, through reinforcement. And I will show this in uh, the context of helping to dress. Uh, for uh, these skills, we are using DMPs, dynamic motor primitives. And the idea is that there is a first demonstration like we had before, then uh, this is projected into a Latin space with less parameters because uh, reinforcement learning has this problem that if the search space is very large, then it takes a lot of time. So we project onto a Latin space with fewer parameters and then we optimize uh, a certain cost function. Well, uh, this is the usual <coughs> formula for the DMP. This is the excitation function. And what has to be learned are these parameters that are weights or on uh, Gaussian functions. So um, here you will see that from a first demonstration, that, that is very bad. You see, it, it's putting a scarf on a mannequin, but uh, the first is not really meeting the goal. But uh, after we have a cost function, uh, because we have a pin end on the top that measures whether the uh, scarf is on the <coughs> uh, After 10 rollouts, you see that it's, uh, it's improved quite a lot. And after 20, uh, it improves even better. Well, this is just to show that since the uh, reinforcement learning as I said, this is quite uh, time-consuming. We have implemented two ways to speed it up. One is to search only uh, along relevant directions, parameter space, uh, using PCA. And the other is to introduce a second layer of Gaussians. With a first layer of Gaussians, we uh, encode the initial demonstration. And then the, this planning tuning is done just in the second layer of Cautions. And you see that this leads to a quite good uh, behavior, uh, improvement over these <coughs> speed up procedures. Next, uh, as I said, safety in this uh, help to dress application is crucial. In this video, I will show um, here in the left panel uh, there will be the initial demonstration. Uh, here, the autonomous uh, dressing by the robot. And in this black spot, you will see the most interesting behavior because it will put the scarf on a person. And the thing is that this person can distort the behavior of the robot, the trajectory, quite strongly, as you see. And uh, still, the, the robot behaves nicely and uh, perseverates in <laughs> finishing 
You see, I, I play here. Like I play it again because, um, well, uh, you see, this is the baby student that is doing the work, mm -hmm. and he's the only one that risked his neck to be placed here. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't get anyone else. But you see that <laughs> he does, he does well. This is, uh, we have incorporated, uh, incorporated a dynamic, um, a very precise dynamic model of the one robot, including in free frictions, for instance, including every uh, small thing, in order to control that it will behave as nicely. So, uh, through learning and by demonstration, uh, you can teach uh, a given task to a robot. But uh, when the robot faces a slightly different context or a slightly different task, uh, then some symbolic understanding of what is going on is needed, not just a reproduction of a detector. So another building block in our research program say is to uh, carry out uh, task planning uh, for uh, several applications. One is cleaning surfaces uh, with the help of a cloth. You see here that there are some dirty there in a surface. And the thing is that uh, this uh, robot is held in a cloth, and every time it, it draws the cloth differently. So the outcome of the actions uh, differs. Uh, here, for instance, you see that it, it will miss uh, some of the dirt, and it will have to come back to, to get it. So we plan this type of task using probabilistic action rules, meaning that uh, there are different possible outcomes, each with a probability. And as long as the behavior is going on, the uh, planner learns these uh, probabilities for the specific context. Uh, within an European project called Intelac, we have uh, tried to go one step further by uh, showing the, by starting with a planner that knows absolutely nothing, has no action, anything. Uh, and then the, the operator shows an initial demonstration from which the system learns some rules, some the, the benchmark is this country assembly, which is quite common uh, from the 80s. Uh, it, well, it entails um, putting several bolts in the right places, like in holes, and then some of the blades on top, etc. The thing is that there are some, um, some precedents, constraints, which are not explicitly taught to the uh, system that should be learned. So there is an initial demonstration by an operator here using a virtual reality system, but we, we have also uh, the, the setting to do it uh, in real. And uh, at the first stage, it learns the different actions and the rule probabilities uh, of the different outcomes. Then, uh, to, in, in this human environment in which we tend to work, uh, we don't want the system to take long time to complete the task if a human is in hand and can supply the needed information. So when some situation like this one arises in which this uh, new situation, uh, uh, this separated is called, is placed before the, the bolts that should be uh, the system doesn't know what to do. In our system, this is marked uh, with a red semaphore. Uh, when it doesn't know what to do, it asks for teacher help. Then the teacher just tells a new action. A new action is uh, separate or remove, in this case. So the system knows that when it faces, uh, again, this situation, it has to remove this separator. And from here, it knows how to proceed as, as before. So when this explained situation uh, um, 
right again, the system autonomously knows what to do. Uh, you see here that it shows uh, show that the, the action uh, removes separate. But uh, we think it, it is important to go one step further again and guide the teacher, telling him what information the system is missing. Because sometimes the system uh, stops because it doesn't, there is no uh, bank plan. And, but uh, the, the operator, for instance, has several options. Assemble the this or this, and doesn't really know what is uh, troubling the, the system, what, what uh, the failure is. So we have implemented <coughs> uh, a system to explain what, the, the, what is the failure, and uh, we have um, based this on uh, what is called excuses in the probabilistic planning domain in artificial intelligence which are that the, the system informs of minimal changes in the state that would make the problem solvable. So if you put me in this position, I know what to do. So uh, the, the, the human operator then knows what has to instruct the system on. And another important thing is not to make extensive use of the teacher. So minimize teacher interaction. And this is a thing by defining such sub goals. If there are chunks of the task that the robot knows how to do, then encapsulate them. Uh, this will be a deal in the special issue of the artificial intelligence journal AI and I think this is Thank you. 